Dosia Miha was born on September 12, 1988, to her Honduran parents who immigrated to the United States in the early 1980s. 16-year-old Dosia was described to be a bright and happy teen. Her ex-boyfriend at the time, Richard Gonzalez, suggested that she was a sensitive individual and happened to be one of those people who cried at sad movies. She lived with her mother, Delcia Oliva, and her stepfather, Ra Mata, in Miami's Colonial Acres mobile home community. Delcia attended the Miami Beach High School and was a sophomore who focused greatly on her grades. She maintained excellent grades while staying out of trouble. At this point in time, Dilcia would start thinking about her future and what she would want to become. The teen had two career paths she saw herself fulfilling and was choosing between a flight attendant or a police detective. Young Dilcia was a dreamer and knew that she could achieve her goals if she worked hard enough. However, young ambitious Dilcia would never get the chance to achieve these goals. On the 16th of September, 2004, five days after her 16th birthday, Dosia was last seen alive by her mother and stepfather, Raw. The teen had spent her evening watching television and said goodnight to her mother and stepfather around 11 p.m. Dosia's mother woke up early the next day as she had to leave for work. She left the home around 5.30 a.m. without checking on her daughter because she assumed that Dosia was still asleep. She wanted to let Dosia get her rest and refused to wake her up. Dosia's stepfather also left the home. At 7.45 a.m., Raw left the home without checking on Dilcia because he also assumed that she had been sleeping. Less than two hours later, around 9.15 a.m., Raw returned home, and a call was made to the police. Raw had found his stepdaughter's dead body on her bed. He pleaded for the authorities to hurry to their home, saying, We need someone to come here. My daughter. My daughter. Somebody killed my daughter. Dilcia's throat was brutally slashed and there were bruising and scratches found on the teen's forearms and biceps. Her body was covered in blood, and the scene was described as gruesome, but this all contrasted with the rest of Dilcia's room. The rest of the room seemed to be untouched, and there were no stolen items, and there were no signs of forced entry. Strangely, Raw had a few bruises and scratches on his arms, as well as a swollen thumb. When probed about his small injuries by investigators, he told them that he had fallen into Dilcia's dresser because he panicked at the discovery of her body. To investigators, it seemed like he had no reason to hurt Dilcia. Police started their investigation after Dilcia's death was ruled as a homicide. They started with Dilcia's friends. They questioned them as well as teachers and staff at the Miami Beach High School. Police found out that Dilcia had been in a fight a few days before her death. They followed up on this lead as potential that it might lead to something in the murder case, but this theory was quickly ruled out. Detectives also attained information that Dosia was neither involved in gang or drug activities. The investigation moved towards the people of the Colonial Acres community, asking neighbors for information about Dosia and if they heard or saw anything on the morning of September 17th. Detectives followed up on each lead with this case and tried their best with every tip that came rolling in. However, in the eyes of the detectives, all roads pointed back to Raul. Raul did not seem at all phased by the brutal murder of his young stepdaughter. During interviews with investigators, Raul would have a nonchalant demeanor. He admitted to authorities that the relationship between him and Dilcia was not a good one, and in his own words, he said that she disliked him. He went on to say that Dilcia was a liar and painted her as a troubled teen with a bad attitude who always fought her parents every chance she got. Even though police were suspicious about Raul's behavior, it was no doubt that people deal with grief differently. And besides, they had no concrete evidence that would link Raul to Dilcia's murder. The case went cold for years, without any new leads, information, or tips. Authorities' efforts to keep the case alive didn't help after there were no clues in sight that would lead back to the dreadful day of Dilcia's murder. Shortly after Dilcia's murder, Raul and Dilcia Oliva divorced and Raul moved to California. There he remarried and had a son, acquired his nursing license and worked as a nurse in the emergency room at Watsonville Community Hospital. Even after his move, he still remained a suspect in Dosia's case. After the teen's tragic murder, Delcia Oliva advocated relentlessly for her daughter's case. She participated in an interview in 2015, pleading with the community to help her in solving the cold case. With more advanced technology as the years passed by, investigators decided to run DNA tests on items found at the crime scene. 
This didn't occur back in 2004 as the DNA technology wasn't available at the time. However, there was no match to any of the DNA found until five years later. In early 2020, Dilsia's case was reassigned to Miami-Dade's cold case squad. At this time, DNA technology had greatly improved, giving intricate details making it easier to find DNA matches. Authorities were able to retrieve DNA from under Dilsia's fingernails, and in May of 2020, police announced that they had finally found a match to DNA on the crime scene. This DNA matched Raw Mada, Dilsia's very own stepfather. Not only did authorities attain the DNA evidence, but circumstantial as well. Detectives learned that Dilsia confessed to her school counselor that Raw had made sexual advances towards her, and right when this information was going to be communicated to her mother, Dilsia was murdered. Exactly 16 years after Dilsia's death, September 17, 2020, Raw Mata was arrested and charged with first-degree murder. The Miami-Dade police partnered with Watsonville police to arrest Raw at a hotel in Santa Cruz where he was vacationing with his wife and children. Raw once again denied any involvement in the murder until detectives laid out the facts of the case and what they had found. Raw's wife refused to believe the allegations against her husband, making it known that her husband was nothing but a nurturing man who took care of the people in the community. Raw was taken to the Santa Cruz County Jail and held without bail until he could be extradited to Miami, where he would face a life sentence and possible capital punishment if convicted. A court appearance was scheduled for October 5, 2020, but before that can happen, Raw decided to make sure that his appearance never happened. A few weeks after his arrest, Raw attempted suicide by taking a pen and stabbing himself in the femoral artery. He was found by an officer who performed life-saving measures until paramedics arrived. Raw was taken to the hospital, and on October 20, 2020, Raw died from complications due to his injury.